What's up everybody, Tom here with another video. Today we'll be talking about the latest stock market news along with our technical analysis thoughts on the S&P 500, NASDAQ, volatility index, and of course US dollar. The stock market has just rejected a critical level and we're seeing further meltdown into previous lows. Where to next for the stock market? Let's take a look together right now. This should be good, stay tuned. So as longtime members of the trading community would know, one of the ways that we like to try to simplify the markets together on this channel is by having a look at what happened over the last 24 hours. We can do that by looking at a S&P 500 heat map, and this one is from finbiz.com, and it's a free resource that you can use right now. I'd just like to also remind everybody, thanks to the support of the trading community, we're about to hit 20k subs, and we'll be giving away $520 just for being a subscriber. So consider hitting the subscribe button and turn those alerts on if you enjoy the content in this video. So really yesterday, what happened? Well, we had Microsoft, Apple, Google, Facebook, and Amazon leading the charge. And whenever these big fang stocks move down, obviously they bring the market and sentiment with them. Overall, these had been bouncing up and now, of course, they got really crushed back down. And Apple shows us a lot of sentiment in the market. And we're taking a look at that chart a little bit later on in this video. What else are we seeing that's a little bit concerning in the market? Well, of course, Fed policymakers have vowed to keep interest rates near zero for an extended period of time during this crisis. But what is more worrying is they're now calling for more fiscal help. And this isn't new. We knew that the Fed wanted Washington to do something and to help them out of dealing with this crisis as they're running out of some types of tools. Now, Wall Street and, of course, the stock market overall doesn't like what it sees. They're not happy with we'll do whatever it takes attitude. They want to see more ideas on what these policies really mean. And this is a huge part of why we're in this current corrective phase, at least currently. So the emphasis is on Washington to get something done. And of course, for us to see more fiscal support in the markets. On to the put call ratios for the day. The CBOE market daily statistics showed us something very interesting indeed. We actually saw a rise in terms of calls versus puts. Put call ratio dropped to 1.55 on the S&P 500. And really when put call ratio drops, we usually can therefore have bearish action. Remember often what people are doing and what the market will do will be opposite. If everybody thinks the market's short, then the market will usually go long. If everybody thinks the market's long, it will often go short. And it's this banking of contracts that's what started actually this real pullback. Because when we saw the euphoria and we had a huge amount of buy calls open, the market obviously wanted to take the money from those and make them expire worthless. So S&P 500 is now down to 1.55, down from over 1.9 the previous day. Pretty important when we're thinking about sentiment. What's happening on the dollar though? The dollar is probably telling us the key metric here, and that is that US dollar strength is showing that markets are a little bit scared. People are moving out of obviously some of the tech stocks and other growth stocks, and they're moving into US dollar bonds and other safe havens. So all of this was triggered really when we got through that 9380 and anyone that's been watching the videos for the last couple of weeks on this channel, we'd all know we were looking at this level with very, very big intent as it was breaking through the 50 exponential moving average on the daily and it also was breaking through key market structure that we can see down here. So where to next for the US dollar? Well, it may pull back a little bit and it may not just continuously aggressive run as that's the nature of trends. However, at this stage, we're looking at 95 previous support acting as resistance or 96 previous support acting as resistance. And it makes sense for the US dollar to find some strength and then maybe overall find some weakness over the longer term as that is the Fed's main goal and main plan. When we take a look at the VIX, the VIX is stuck between two zones. We really have this 25 support here and obviously we've got body closes around the 29 where the market or the VIX has not closed a daily above this 200 green simple moving average line. When it comes to what happens next for the VIX, well, if we do see a spike up in the VIX and a close above this area, we would expect it to potentially even bull into 35 where previous body closes are. And if that happens, we'll certainly be seeing a pretty massive spike in volatility on the markets. And of course, further new lows on not only the NASDAQ, but the Dow and the S&P 500. What are the metals that are used in usually recoveries telling us? Well, copper did have a slump last night. It came back down to the 2.95 area. And overall, it's now finding support at previous resistances, previous resistances acting as support, plus the 50 exponential moving average, 
which shows that the previous time it hit this level, it did find relative support and bounce off it. So copper is still looking okay at this stage. If it does continue to go down and it gets through 2.8, we could be seeing more than a correction on the stock market. But for now, we're just getting pulled back to probably what's going to be around 20% off the NASDAQ when all is said and done. Taking a look at silver around the market, silver's getting obliterated. And it's not only getting obliterated, it's becoming very difficult to know where it will stop. We've obviously got a huge sell-off event occurring here. It's hit the 20 exponential moving average on the weekly chart and then it's continued to dump down. Now we haven't got a weekly close on it, so we don't know if it'll pull up and find support there. But overall, I put monthly pivots on here and we're not even at the monthly S2 yet. So we've got a Fibonacci indicator here in terms of retracement. We've got a monthly S2 and a 50 exponential moving average blue line here just behind it. You know, as well as I do, if you've come to our live streams and definitely consider subscribing if you haven't come to one of them, we really like to see markets pull back into between the 38.2 and the 50 Fibonacci and find support in this zone. So for silver bulls, you really need it to stop in this area and to find some kind of support. And if you're wondering why it's so aggressive on the way down, well, it's because of the aggressive move up. Really, we haven't even retraced 50% of the move since down in March, but we don't have much price action structure in this market. We don't have previous resistances acting as support. And the previous kind of resistance over here is so low that the market would be pulling back all the way to a 61.8 fib before it even found previous price action support over the last couple of years. Let's now take a look at two of the main sentiment drivers in the market, one of them being Apple. We've talked about this zone quite a lot, so we won't go into any more detail in it right now. But basically, Apple has a $100 kind of price tag on it that it may find support at. And that would line up very well with the channel breaks on both the NASDAQ and, of course, the S&P 500 into support levels. We've got the 100 zone here, and you can see that's the weekly 20 moving average, previous high resistance, and it's in that 38.2 to 50 Fibonacci zone. So it does make sense that Apple could bear down into this point and it is a very big sentiment driver. If Apple cracked this zone, where does it go next? All the way into the 90s or even 80s is possible. Now, I hope it doesn't go down to those levels personally. I know some people will want it to go down there, but overall, if we get to 100, there should be some kind of buying support there from Wall Street. Tesla, another market sentiment driver, has found a lot of bearish action. Now, everybody would know this is a clear case of buy the rumor, sell the news. And Tesla was, of course, bucking the trend while the market was selling off, Tesla was moving up. Now, I've got some concerns here for Tesla because not only is it moving incredibly aggressively down, but it's being sold off heavily after hours as well. There is some support here at the monthly S1, which is also around that previous market resistance between the 340 and the 330 zone. But overall, Tesla could be looking at a further corrective phase here. We might even see it go downwards of previous market structure into the 280s or 285s. Time will have to tell. It's one of those ones that I would dive into the smaller timeframes and wait for the price action to tell me what to do. And we'll be taking a look at that at the live stream as well tonight, 10 p.m. AEST. Let's now move on to the broader market. So we have first the NASDAQ. Well, the NASDAQ daily, few things going on. Number one, we have not had a 2050 cross in a very long time. It's a pretty significant cross on the markets. And if we do get this, it may cause even further selling. So let's hope that the market kind of finds a base soon and starts to hover within that range, if not spikes up, if you're a market bull. Now, we've basically got here an engulfing candle off the close yesterday in the terms of the daily, and it engulfed the previous bullish momentum. We haven't got a new low yet, so that's not signaling that we're going down to the 10.3 level, which is the end of, of course, the market structure channel. But overall, things are looking relatively bearish on the NASDAQ right now. The best time frame to probably be looking at on your charts is going to be the four hour and the one hour charts. You actually can trade them relatively well right now, but remember that markets are inherently built bullish sentiment. So when you're selling, yes, the market move will be faster in terms of the bearish market move is always faster than the bullish move, but overall you have to be quick, nimble and fast when it comes to selling the market. If we get a break below this 10.7 zone, expect it to go into the market structure of 10.4, and that's where the previous support zones were had, and of course the direction of what this channel was telling us. 
The new S100 did slightly overshoot and it really shows the importance of looking at the S&P 500 to give you the most amount of sentiment in the markets. We'll move over now to the S&P 500. So this is actually the real market chart and you'll know that I love doing analysis on the real market chart. Why is this? Well, the close is everything in the markets and it will really never be anything other than that. Pretty much what we saw yesterday was the market opened at the exact same point as it closed that was previous support in the market and we can see it acted as resistance and then the market started selling off. In terms of where we expect this US 500 to go, well if you take a trend line and you kind of work out the previous move here which is the channel and you extrapolate that out, it really points that the market should try and test the 3200 zone which is also a monthly S2 pivot previous weekly resistance over here back in June. And of course, we've got here a very important moving average on the four hour being the 200 simple moving average. So there's quite a lot of reasons why the market may make a new low, come down to the 3200 and find some buying pressure at this level. If it gets through this level, well, it could be all very different. We might even see lows of 3000 where I'm sure there'll be other market buying pressure as well. So really the market's moving in 200 chunks and overall, we have, of course, a 2050 cross to the downside now on the four hour charts on the S&P 500. And if we go to the daily overall here, we still do not have, of course, a daily 2050 cross, but they're pretty rare in the market. They don't happen that often and often they are pretty important zones. So we'd want as market bulls to be looking at the 3200 and then of course under that point potentially all the way down to the 3000 where previous market support and resistance should act as support and resistance again and it will be a pretty important fib level as well if we draw a fib of the zone we draw from the lows of course in march and we draw all the way up to what happened recently you'll notice that we're not even at a 38.2 fib pullback yet of the market low to the market high Usually what happens is the market will usually come down to a 38.2 fib in a very good correction and that's why we like to target in that 50 to 38.2 fib zone and that's actually pointing to as low as 3000. So remember that the market to put it in perspective hasn't even come back that much since it's super bullish aggressive move up. So right now we could be looking at 3200 some buying pressure, 3000 a lot more buying pressure and hopefully that's where it stops and we continue to see bullish momentum. Quick reminder in terms of the news that's coming out this week, we do have of course Fed Chair Powell testifying again on Thursday my time, 12 a.m. Get your economic calendar from forexfactory.com for free and set it to your time zone. We've got Fed Chair Powell testifying again on Friday and of course Mnuchin coming out and speaking as well on Friday. Now you can go through the results. We're doing a video on this to talk about what mnuchin has been doing with Powell and whether it's usually acted as a positive result for the markets in previous meetings. But overall, these key bits of news are disrupting markets right now and the market's losing faith in the Fed and fiscal policy overall to support the current price valuations. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure to of course subscribe and hit that alert button and give us a big thumbs up if you think we provide great content. I'll see everyone at the live stream tonight or of course, maybe you'll be watching the live replay. See you soon, good luck in the markets and happy trading. Bye for now.